it to nail him. Finally, light at the end of the tunnel. We, we can see something good coming our way. The harness racing industry has been struggling in Maine because of increased competition from gaming revenues. To understand harness racing and its impact statewide on Maine agriculture, we have to start with the foal. Maine horse breeders who preserve some of Maine's most beautiful farms spend thousands of dollars on each horse before she ever steps a hoof on the racetrack. And from the time that, may, that foal is born to the time it races, you know, you've got to protect that horse, you know, day and night, you know, and, and, and nurture it to make sure it gets the proper nutrition. More money is put into one of these horses than a lot of times people put into their vehicles. Caring for these beautiful animals costs about $10,000 a year and requires five jobs or services. The groomer, trainer, vet, hay and feed producers, and blacksmith to get them from foal to the finish line. Ernie Lowell has been in the industry for 43 years. I often wish that somebody from Augusta, a state rep or a senator, somebody could come and ride in my truck with me for a week to the various farms and see the troubles and the hardships they're having just trying to stay in business. It, it, they'd look at it different. It would, they'd have such a different outlook on the whole situation. You know, these horses really contribute to open space, you know, because, you know, wherever these horses got to have a rest sometime, they got to go someplace, you know, where there's green grass, and, you know, or there's a farmer who's going to be growing hay on that land, which he can in turn get reasonable money for it to sell it to us. There are more than 1,500 family farms from Berwick to Presque Isle involved in supporting harness racing. A 2006 study by Planning Decisions in South Portland shows owners of racehorses spend $25 million a year in Maine and direct business sales associated with the industry total more than 20 million additional dollars. If we lose harness racing, we've lost our open space, the last of our farms, we've, we've lost a huge economic impact upon the state of Maine and our communities. In November of this year, Biddeford residents were asked to vote on whether to allow a racino in their community. The project included a hotel, entertainment complex, harness racing, and slots. The promise from the developers, Scarborough Downs and Ocean Properties, was 500 jobs into the local area and additional revenue and a chance for harness racing to survive. <laughs> the people of Maine voted in 2003 to allow both of Maine's commercial tracks to operate with slot machines, but the fine print was written to benefit an out-of-state investor and included unfair deadlines which need to be corrected so harness racing will have the two racinos that were originally intended. Two racinos that are needed for harness racing to survive and compete. Bitterford Downs is that opportunity for Southern Maine. This project can bring jobs and needed revenue to the community, and together we can make Bitterford a destination and assure the survival of harness racing. And as the campaign unfolded, support grew for many good reasons. It's about agriculture. Maine is about agriculture. It's about keeping this alive. It's about open space. It's about farmers. It's about growing hay. It's about everything that we believe in as Mainers. I think it's time better to get some tourism in the city and help our local businesses flourish. In November, on election night, the voters spoke. The plan to bring a Racino in a hotel to Biddeford has passed by a wide margin. Voters put their faith by a 20-point margin in both Scarborough Downs and Ocean Properties. We're going to end up with an absolutely world-class facility here in Biddeford that's going to make even the people who we didn't convince so far proud of this great facility. Ocean Properties has a long history in Maine. Owner Tom Walsh started out in Bangor and now has holdings around the world. One of the many notable destinations is the Samoset Resort in Rockport. You know, so Tom has, uh, while he's been successful all over the country, he's brought his money back to Maine and he loves Maine and uh, he really uh, likes to, you know, 
reinvest in, 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 in Maine. With two such respected Maine businesses, Ocean Properties and Scarborough Downs, behind the project, those who make their living from harness racing are encouraged about the future. Come on, big color. It'll just mean that we can work all year round and make a living and be able to stay where the kids' grandparents are, you know, where we've made a life, we've lived our entire lives, and not have to move somewhere else and try to try to do what we love and make a living at it. It's dug in, you know, it's deep rooted, it really is, and it's not just everybody seems to think we're a hobby for some stupid reason, but man, come down and clean the stalls for a while and shiver and shake in the wintertime and you'll find out it's the hardest working hobby you've ever tried. Bitterford Downs will not be a phased in project. The partners have the resources and the commitment to move forward with a project that in addition to preserving Maine's harness racing, secures the future of Maine's agricultural fairs. It will also fund scholarships for Maine students and help revitalize the city of Bitterford. The project is expected to generate more than $28 million in revenues for Maine's general fund in the project's first year of operations. It was a cold. I was happy. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Southern Maine. It's so needed down here.